level above Al Rafai. IPAC urges Sani to form inquiry commission on inherited debt from Al Rafai. Senator Plank speaks on National Assembly Padding 2024 budget. Dano Bwala again calls up Peter Obi. Ex Senator declares Ebos can only attain presidency through APC and bandit storms and father mask kidnap worshippers. Details now. The World News at 12 begins with a member of the House of Representatives, Chinedu Oga, reacting to reports of a purported alliance between the former governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Arafai, and the 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi. VOP News understands that there are rumors claiming that Obi and Arafai have formed an alliance to defeat President Bola Tinubu in the 2027 election. Reacting, Olga, the lawmaker representing the Ikoeza South Federal Constituency of Aboyne State and the chairman of the House Committee on Reformatory Institutions, argue that Tinubu is no match among opposition politicians who are preparing to contest in the next presidential poll in 2027. Speaking to newsmen, Olga maintained that he has not seen any politician in the country that can contest against Tinubu because of his performance and track record. He insisted that President Tinubu is aware of the problems plaguing the country and is already making efforts to fix them. He said, and quote, who is contesting against the president in 2027? Who will run against him? I have even endorsed the president for 2027 and have not seen anybody that will match him. I have not seen anybody that will match Tinubu in 2027. Forget the noise on social media some people are making. Is it Arafai who could not win Kaduna, his state, that will match him? He is not an issue if he is running. End quote. Elsewhere, the Kaduna State Inter-Party Advisory Council has advised Governor Uba Sani to establish a commission of inquiry to investigate the actual amount of the substantial debts left behind by his predecessor, Malam Nasir Arafai. The chairman of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, Kaduna State, Ahmed Tijani Mustafa, conveyed during a press briefing in Kaduna on Monday that IPARC, in its role as custodians of democratic ideals, norms and good governance, and as beacons of democracy, would persist in shaping Kaduna State's political landscape and advancing the collective interests of the people, government, and its diverse political parties. He reiterated IPAC's ongoing contribution to molding Kaduna State's political environment and its commitment to furthering the collective interests of the people, government and various political entities. Mustafa remarked on the troubling situation revealed by Governor Ubasani, who disclosed a staggering debt of $587 million, which is about $85 billion naira and 115 contractual commitments passed down from the previous administration resulted in financial constraints including difficulties in salary payments. Elsewhere, the senator representing Plateau Central in the National Assembly, Dickett Plang, has said the legislature did not part the 2024 budget. Plang, a member of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, stated this in a chat with journalists and Mandarin Joss, the Plateau State Capitol. The chairman of the All Progressives Congress said that the National Assembly passed a budget of 28.77 trillion naira and not 23 trillion naira, as claimed by Senator Abdul Ningi. The lawmaker stated that President Tinubu on November 29, 2023, brought before a joint session of the National Assembly a budget of 27.2 trillion naira. Plang also stated that at the request of the executive, the National Assembly added about 1.5 trillion naira to make it 28.77 trillion naira. Plang also disclosed that the 10th National Assembly was lucky to be working with President Bola Tinubu, who knows the workings of the legislature, having been a former senator. He said the executive arm was populated with former lawmakers, including the vice president, the chief of staff, the secretary to the government of the federation, and the wife of the president. In another development, a former spokesman of the Atiku Okawa presidential campaign council, Daniel Bwala, has said the 2023 Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi is currently in a dilemma. Bwala, a supporter of President Bola Tinumbu, was reacting to Obi's latest threat 
to dump the Labour Party if the internal crisis rocking the party continues before the 2027 general elections. The former Anambra state governor had vowed not to die with the party, hence his decision to leave the is if the issues can't be resolved. Reacting in a post via his official X handle on Monday, Bola said Obi is hunted by a ghost he created in the Labour Party. He said Obi had sensed the obvious that the Labour Party would not give him an automatic ticket and had therefore threatened to leave the party if he was not chosen in 2027. Bala also claimed that Obi is in a quagmire because the Social Democratic Party SDP he intends to join does not have an automatic ticket for him. Bala alleged that Obi was advised immediately to start a campaign and wore the core of Northern Nigeria as well as the Muslim com communities across the nation ahead of the 2027 election. He wrote categorically and quote, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party at the 2023 elections, Peter B, is hunted by a ghost that he created. Sensing the obvious in the Labour Party to the effect that there is no automatic ticket, he has therefore threatened that if the party would not conform, he would leave. The Social Democratic Party, which he hopes to use the platform when the need arises, does n doesn't give automatic tickets. Peter B. feared that he may likely not win delegate election because he is not a grassroots politician. He is presently in the Gwak Meyer. End quote. Meanwhile, Chukuka Otazi, the immediate past senator representing Enugu North Senatorial Zone, has declared that only through the All Progressives Congress APC and Debo can produce a Nigerian president. Utazi, who recently defected to the ruling party from the People's Democratic Party PDP, urged Indigo to serve in the APC to stand the chance of producing a president for Nigeria. The former commissioner for transport in Enugu State said the Southeast could only be considered for the vice presidency when power rotates to North in 2031 and subsequently they can push for the presidency when it returns to the South. His words. If you do everything and you're not at the center, you're not gaining anything. We want to come together to get this presidency we are looking for. If we come together, we'll get it. The only way we can get the presidency of Nigeria is by serving an APC. We have to do it now, not when it is late. End quote. Uh, thank you, Kayla, for that one. That's a very interesting one we're going to look into uh, today while we're actually going into a news analysis segment. And today we have on the telephone a legal practitioner, a political and social affairs commentator, and that is Barrister Eze Eluche. Barrister Eze Eluche will be helping us buttress the stories that we just read out and give us his perspective based on the questions we are going to ask him this afternoon. Barrister Eze Eluche, good afternoon and welcome to the World News at 12. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for the invite. Thank you so much, Barrister Eze Luchi. Let me start off with the House of Representative member representing uh, Plateau State, Just Central. Pickett is saying that uh, apparently the Senate did not part the 2024 budget. He categorically stated that it was a demand or a request from the executive to add the 1.7 trillion naira to the already existing budget presented. Now the question is, if it was from the executive, why did the whole entire situation cause the hula-baloo when Senator Ningi stated that he does not know where 1.5 trillion naira came from because there were no allocations on the 2024 budget for that additional money. If it came from the presidency, why was that not communicated to to the House of Rep members? Well, this, this, what is emerging now from the bickering going on over the budget is that most of our legislators do not even understand the budgeting process. I think the budgeting process starts and ends with the passage of the budget by the National Assembly and signing by the President. That is not how it happens. If you recollect, before a budget is passed, the various ministries, departments, and agencies will come and defend their budgets before the National Assembly, the various committees of the National Assembly, after Mr. President has presented. So this process goes on for over two, three months. It's not a one-day affair. So but it, what Mr. President submits may differ from what eventually gets passed, because in the process of analyzing and scrutinizing the budget, there may be some minuses and some additions which the National Assembly, in its wisdom, decides to impute into the budgeting process. And after this, the two houses have to come and agree on, because they will all have their various committees, and then they will agree on what forms the budget. 
It is this document that finally gets sent to sign. So when people, when this legislation like, keep on coming on air and say, adding there was this, there was that, you wonder whether they even understand what they're doing there. It's not based on what Mr. President submits or what the House feels like. The agencies and various other personnel also make inputs. Now, what they may be questioning is that was what was passed as a budget presented, or was it the same thing that was transmitted to Mr. President to sign? If there was any alteration, as had happened in the past, if you recollect, when Mr. Lucien Mbosner was the president, there was allegation of alteration of the document that was approved by the National Assembly before it was sent to the president. Now, that forms a criminal act because the National Assembly passed the budget and if the clerk or whoever that is now asked to transmit adds or minuses, it becomes a criminal act. Mm. It's not an act where you just keep on going on air and then one senator says this, mm. the other says that. If the Mithaningi or even this plateau still has any case that there was an alteration of the budget after it was passed, they should go and report to the police. All right, Barrister Essa, then why, 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 did the Ningi, why did Ningi grant a, a press, in, a comprehensive interview actually, started off with the BBC House of Service, where he mentioned that there was some bad uh, padding on the 2024 budget. Now, he did not uh, only expose the porosities within the House or how they do with financial allocations. He actually presented his colleagues like they were inept. Yeah. So why did you do that? If you knew, like you just mentioned, the protocol observed, the process observed, Ninger is not a first-time senator. So why make this declaration? Could this be based on the fact that, you remember the chief we Bamidele said that there is a machination or a civil coup to actually out, uh, oust uh, uh, Akwabio, Senator President Akwabio? Could this be basically what it is actually, or this is something else at play? And it is what Mr. Ningi, what Mr. Ningi alleged, even his men, even the Northern Tacos of the Senate, all denounced him and told him he should apologize. So it is clear that what he did on the floor of the Senate, or in the interview with the BBC, was more of a Okay. And he is now, he's, and that there is pleas for him to come back. Those are political, politicians are doing what they know best. There's always a give and take. So but do you Mr. think the whole, the, the whole process was a distraction? The whole process it, was a distraction? Simply, it was a distraction. If Mr. Ningi knew that there was some criminal acts after the budget was passed, mm. some additions were made before it was signed, mm. he knows he, as a, as a long-time senator who has pedigree in the Senate, he knows what next to do. But, and what next to do is to report to the police. Barista. Because these are clear-cut legal issues. But Criminal, they, yes. Now, you're, you're saying this, but why did some other senators corroborate with Ningi? Well, I mean, like I said, they did not understand, most of them don't even understand the process. Like, you don't just come and say, the Senate passed this and the Mr. But, President signed this. The reality is, like I explained earlier, the various ministries, departments, and agencies bring their budgets and come and do a budget defense before it is passed. Even the so-called consent allowances that gets to the that the senators are responsible for does not go into their pockets. No, the various ministries also have to come and defend this. Barista, and yes, it's good. Barista, don't you think this makes the National Assembly look unreliable? No, it does not. It just makes Nigerians, Nigerians realize the kind of politics going on in the National Assembly. A lot of mudslinging. The, the, the budget is not what will make the National Assembly unreliable or reliable. Okay. I keep on explaining. Right. There, is a, there are various steps to a budget. Okay. One of which is the various ministries, depending on agencies, okay. come and defend their budgets. Hmm. And the National Assembly, it's at that stage that the members of the National Assembly will say, okay, because if you are doing this across it, I want this to be in my constituency. All and right. that's what the constituency programs of these National Assembly members. All and right. they are entitled to it. All right, if, you, if, you have a, sorry, sorry, if you have a senator who goes to the National Assembly and is not able to track any project to his constituency, then the constituency people should ask him to get out of the National Assembly. It is All part right. of their duties to ensure that their constituency gets projects from the National Assembly every year. All right. Thank you so much for that clarification. All right, so
Let's move on to this particular senator representing Enugu North Senatorial District. I'm going to be fast because I have all the topics I want you to talk on. Apparently, he's saying that the only way an evil person can emerge as a president of this country is through the All Progressives Congress. And I want to read out, you know, his quote, because it's quite, it's quite important that we reel out some of these things and have a contextual uh, analysis on that. So this is what he's saying. If you do everything and you are not at the center, you are not gaining anything. We want to come together to get this presidency. So in order for us to get it, the APC is the only way to do that. It is through the APC that a presidential candidate from the East or from the Southeast can emerge. So again, another quote of his, when we serve in APC now and follow to the end, when the presidency rotates to the North, we expect the vice presidency to come to the Southeast. When it is the turn of the South, we will now start talking about the presidency. Please, do you agree? with the senator that the only way through which uh, a southeastern person can emerge as a president of this country is by the really no progressive congress through that political party certainly not i don't agree with these outdated political ideas mm -hmm. because the senator who is making that uh, has very um, parochial ideas and that is that does not represent the evil man's view what the evil actually wants is good governance at the center whether it's from wherever, Bibo, Yoruba, or anybody who can govern this country well, is what the Igbo man feels should be, should be there. But with regards to his um, saying that you must have a party at the center to belong or to make benefits, Imo State has a governor uh, who, is, who belongs to the party at the center. And what has the level of governance in Imo State been? What has the level of infrastructural development in Imo State been? It has been abysmal. It has been horrible. The security situation is so terrible. Compare that with a state like Abia State, which does not have, with the governor, it belongs to the Labour Party, and it's not so-called, it's not in the so-called center. But because of the good governance that is being implemented in Abia State, we see developmental strides going on, electricity, everything is going on well in, in Abia State. So the senator from Enugu State, if he does not know what next to say, he should please keep shocked. What the South East wants, rather, is good governance. And we don't really care where the government, where the, where the, uh, the president comes from. Yes, if it's an evil man, okay. But if it's not an evil man, but can deliver good governance, that is okay, well and good. I mean, uh, the, this, this tribe has no, has no religious sentiments being displayed by these characters is what has been retarding against progress. Okay, the, the Southwest, the North, the North had Buhari there for eight years. How has Katsina State said? How has Zampara State, which is which another state neighboring to Katsina said, they have been destroyed by terrorists and bandits, and they have somebody from their region as president. Is that what the people of the North, North, uh, North West want? They had Buhari there. So what the South is, what the evil man wants is good governance, and wherever it comes from, it's okay. We don't have to enslave ourselves, like this senator has enslaved himself to a political party that has that last ideas. I think that is what the woman needs. No, it is not. All right, Barrister. Now let's move out over to uh, Daniel Bwala. Well, he has said that Peter Obi is haunted by a ghost he created in the Labour Party. Well, he said that Obi had sensed the obvious that the Labour Party would not give him an automatic ticket and had therefore threatened to leave the party if he was not chosen in 2027. Well, Barrister, you do recall that uh, Peter Obi had an engagement with the supporters on X last Friday. Well, according to Peter Obi, he said the contrived crisis of the Labour Party was a part of destructive strategy, which neither he nor his supporters were willing to fall for. And he also said his engagement is about Nigeria and he's trying to change the focus. What we want to do is not about Labour Party, it is about what obedience want to do about Nigeria. Well, this is according to Peter B. Now, my question here is where did Daniel Bwala get that information that Peter B is leaving? And why the recent tank on Peter B? Now, Mr. Bwala is, we can easily describe as uh, in local parlance as an anywhere best face politician. A politician that cuttles that cuttles to whoever pays the highest bidding. Before he began to work for Mr. Bola Tinubu, he was abusing and cursing Mr. Tinubu with all the muzzle and blood in his veins. So now that he has jumped ship and is working for Tinubu, he can talk whatever crap he feels like talking. But we should not give credence to such characters who lack scruples, who lack, who lack any foundations or any moral foundations. So he can say whatever he wants to say about Mr. Peter B or Mr. or any other politician for that matter. But if he's a man who can eat and swallow his vomit once he's paid a fee, 
So why must Nigerians be bothered about such characters? Yes, which is that so, Mr. Blake, joining any political party, he's free. We must all realize that three or four months to the elections, there was nothing like Labour Party. It was just one of those existing political parties until Mr. Peter became in and transformed it into the National Party. So who says that party XYZ by the next elections cannot be also transformed by any politician who has the stature of Mr. B three months of the election? It is so all this noise about uh, uh, jumping political parties at this stage when we know that we know how these parties are structured, it's unfortunate. All right, when that comes, they just will fight this. All right, let's go into the Independent National Electoral Commission. It's quite vital because at the end of the day, when it comes to politics, when it comes to electoral offices, when it comes to the organizing and choosing or eventually affirming who credibly won any election whatsoever, of course, INEC is the body responsible for that. And another thing I want to also put in place is that the vision statement of INEC is to be one of the best election management bodies in the world that meets the aspirations of the Nigerian people, which is is basically what is the conflict of interest here. INEC has complained and has berated the blown heart that there are lots of statements degrading, denigrating the personnel, specifically Mahmoud Yakub, of their activities within the institution. Now, they complain that some politicians and those who are not possibly happy or whose presidential political candidates did not emerge victorious have gone all through whatever measures to discredit the hard work of the institution. Mahmoud Yakub has warned that they should no longer continue that as members within the institution are working hard to ensure that elections are properly conducted within the stipulated means given to them. Baris Eze Uche, why do you think a lot of Nigerians berated INEC? Why do you think a lot of Nigerians have made derogatory statements against the institution despite the hard work, despite the commitment on the Mahmoud Yakub that the institution and his personnel has been able to implement when it comes to elections in the country, given, for example, the 2023 elections? Nigerians do not are not making derogatory comments about INEC. Nigerians are making realistic, truthful, and clear cut statements on a dubious organization headed by Mahmoud Yakubu. Mahmoud Yakubu, prior to the elections, gave assurances as to how the elections will take place, as to the use of the divas, as to the use of the IRS portal, and they, they make categorical statements. They were going all over the world swearing that this is what will be. That it will be a key and free elections. And on the election day, Nigerians watch with horror at all those uh, agreements that Mahmoud Yakubu um, and his uh, fellow commissioners, fellow, fellow trustees in the INEC, how they failed in each and every one of those promises. So when Nigerians talk about INEC in such passionate words, they are not denigrating INEC. They are properly describing a dubious and quasi-criminal organization, which not only destroyed the hope of Nigerians, but also shook our confidence in the democratic process. So, Mr. Mac to stop what that saying, but the reality is that Nigerians and the entire world saw the sham he represents, and they are very, very truthful in what they are saying. So you can see whatever he's saying, but the, the, with these characters in INEC, particularly Mr. Kool Deku and Co still at the head of INEC in 2027, there is simply no hope of any free and fair elections. So there must be a drastic change of personnel for any iota of hope to be restored in that institution. And this is most, most unfortunate. You well, can feel free okay. and say what you want to say. If, okay. if he feels aggrieved, he should go to court. But he, can't, he dare not go to any court because he knows that Nigerians speak the truth when they describe him as a very great liar somebody who is not trustworthy and who is not reliable. Barista, as I will say, Mahmoud Yacoub's tenure will, will soon expire. Do you expect anything more from the next INEC chairman who will be appointed by the president ahead of 2027? I mean, a lot of people feel that Mahmoud has set up a precedent and maybe the next uh, INEC chair could, you know, follow up with footprint. Or do you think there'll be a difference, like you said, a complete overhaul on how things are done within the institution to gain that reliance and dependability from Nigerians on the institution? Well, seeing, um, observing how the court gave a stamp of approval to the criminal actions of the INEC chairman and his uh, cohorts in INEC, I do not, um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm concerned it's very likely that Mr. Tinubu will renew 
the appointment of such a character who gave him so much. Who you think he will renew? Mark Mood emerged in 2015 as the INEC chair. This is 2023. His tenure is definitely supposed to expire now. He has literally served two terms. Would he renew Mark Mood Yacoub's contract again? Knowing the, case, the characters who are manning our offices, the president himself, he can change whatever and make the process. Wouldn't that be against the Electoral Yacoub. Act or the 1999 Constitution? <laughs> well, if you realize that it was a concern that the Supreme Court found difficulties in defining what ANZ means, you realize it will have gone down the abyss. So that's why you put this was a concern. We put it severally during the electoral process when it could have made a meaning. So this concern for political matters is can be manipulated and twisted, and the courts will give proof of such matters can be concern. So when it comes to the INEC uh, uh, chairmanship or the INEC board, mm -hmm. if Mr. Tinubu decides to continue with them, he will. And he knows what to do to go around the constitution. He's been doing that for a while. Wow. So I'm saying, uh, let's let yes, it's quite interesting that I'm sounding this exponent, but that is the reality. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have said to you that I wouldn't even be surprised if Mr. Tinubu appoints his son or his daughter who now goes by the appellation first lady, first daughter of the Federal Republic. As INEC chairman, he can do it it's within his powers. So it is left to Nigerians to now decide when to say enough is enough, mm -hmm. because there must be an enough to his charity, to this um, God, um, this desecration of the national current, of the, of the Nigerian state. Barrister Zawuchi, I want to say thank you so much for your time and giving us your perspective on the questions posed at you concerning the stories that were read out of the World News at 12. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. All right, thank you. Kayla Abraham, Barrister has been able to give us his perception to this, but I still wonder that he, he gave a scenario that there is a possibility that the president may renew the appointment of Mark Yacoub as the INEC chair. And he was declared the INEC chair in 2015. That was during the first tenure of the former president, Muhammad Buhari's administration. Don't you think that if that happens, considering the fact that uh, Mark Yacoub is now infamous with the Nigerian people, that there will be a backlash, a serious and heavy backlash on the presidency? I think that is already happening. And like Barrister um, Ezra Erichia said, if the presidency renews mm. Mahmoud Yakubu's contract, contract it's, going we appoint be, him. it's going to be a big deal. Because we have seen INEC and the way they do things. Barrister Erichia mm. called it dubious. Yes. The Nigerians can trust the independent national electoral body. We can't. And now if the presidency does this, this shows Nigerians why we can't trust our government and why we can even trust the independent national... So, Kila, right now, with how the 2023 elections went, uh, if, I, if it gets to 2027, there is a new INEC chair. Yeah. He has promised that there's going to be a transparent method of conducting elections. Everything is going to be clean and clear. You, you don't think that Nigerians will come out en masse like they did in 2023 to participate. And you don't think that with a new INEC chair, possibly affirming to the Nigerian people that there will be a change of the system, that indeed the system will change. You don't, do, do you believe that? Would you come out? I would. You would? Yes. That's good. That's a, that's a plausible encouragement. Another thing to consider is when one of the senators representing Inigo is stating that it is only through the APC that a Southeastern person can emerge as a president. Yeah. Why do you think such a statement would be made? But you would think that because the APC has literally almost taken over all the political sp uh, appointments or positions across every segment available every in the state. polity, yeah. that that's why he made that statement? I think so. Do you think it's the ruling party that determines the next president from whatever region? I don't think so. So are you saying, I, 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 don't you think that with how enlightened and aware Nigerians have become, specifically with the current generation, that the current status quo or the way things used to be, there's going to be a pivotal shift come 2027? There is. There's going to be a pivotal shift. With how and Nigerians are going through and experiencing things now? I believe so. I then really the really opportunity so. for Nigerians in diaspora to actively participate, do you think that that will be something that will be implemented in 2027, that will be allowed? It wasn't allowed this time. Yeah. Maybe if it's pushed through in the House to become, you know, if it's passed through, Nigerians in diaspora can participate without having to fly down back to the country right. to be part of the process. I, I personally believe that should be implemented. That's right. a very, very important one. All right. Thank you. Let's wrap up. And just before we go, here again are the top stories. House of Reps member places Tinubu above RFI. IPAC urges Senate to form inquiry commission on inherited debts from RFI. Senator Plank speaks on National Assembly padding 2024 budget.
Daniel Boala again calls out Peter Obi. Ex Senator declares Ebos can only attain presidency through APC. Bandit Storm Zamfara Musk kidnap a worshippers. That's a wrap on the World News at 12. My name is Esther Wachuku. And I am Kayla Abraham. Good afternoon and thank you for listening. Up next is Martyrs with the Kami Judah. Test and memories and voice of the people, 90.3 FM.